Well, I have uh, I have nine o'clock in the morning, so I'd like to welcome everybody to this service, and we're doing the service of the Feast of Epiphany because uh, it's a movable feast, and we usually move it to the Sunday after Epiphany. Remind people, everybody on Zoom now, please mute yourselves, and there'll be other times when I want ask you to unmute yourselves because we can hear background noise. I'll remind you, especially during the prayers of the people, if you will, if you have prayers to utter, just unmute yourselves and utter them. And those on Facebook, if you'll write them in the comment section, I will read them. And right now, just those of you on Zoom can see who's on Zoom, but on Facebook, we have Sharon Hargraves, Susie Delger, Vicki Jasmine, Dorothy Brown, and Charlene Klein watching with us. Uh, there are 14 people. So I'm sure there'll be others, and I'll mention them during the prayers of the people. Now, if we'll take a moment of silence for the prelude. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father. We worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us who know you now by faith to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I remind all of you, please mute your... Uh, microphones until further notice other than the readers reading from isaiah arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord has risen upon you for darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples but the lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 72 on page 685. Of the Book of Common Prayer. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute, and the kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him and all the nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress and the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence and dear shall their blood be in his sight. A reading from Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, 
as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Jesus Christ through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Sorry, let's listen to the music. We'll try this again. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so I may also go and pay him homage. 
When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they entered the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure tress, chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Amen. This morning, as I do every year, I move the readings from the Feast of Epiphany to the Sunday following the feast day, which is always January 6th, which by the way, in the Eastern church, uh, they celebrate Christmas on January 6th. And this story is of those so-called three wise men. Well, tradition has changed scripture because of saint songs and other purposes to imply there are only three. Nothing in scripture tells us there were only three, and none of us tell us that there were not women advising them. And these three, or these many, Eastern astrologers, magi as we call them, were observing and searching the stars for truth and guidance, and they discovered Jesus. On the Feast of Epiphany, I normally speak of us called to be a light unto the nations, a light on a hill to inspire others, a lighthouse to give hope to the lost, seeking guidance, a lantern unto our feet and the feet of all peoples, a light for those lifting up their eyes to the hills, wondering from where does their help come? And our response is their help comes from Jesus. People have said of me that I'm sort of a Pollyanna kind of person that tries to avoid reality. As a matter of fact, one longtime friend once said to me, Jim, how have you gotten through life so long escaping reality? I am an eternal optimist. And I claim that I tend to focus upon good news rather than bad news. And I see the glass not just half full, but mostly full. And yet, the shadow of epiphany in the infancy narratives includes the warning, a sword shall pierce your soul. And the events depicted on the Feast of Holy Innocence, the slaughter of the Holy Innocence. In fact, the manger scene takes place in the shadow of the cross. Laying Jesus in the manger takes place in the shadow of laying his dead body in the tomb. The visit of the Magi, those considered wise, takes place in the shadow of those called wise, the scribes and lawyers of Jesus' adult life, the politicians of the day, the priest, King Herod, Governor Pontius Pilate proclaiming that Jesus must bleed and die, and the mob shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And I never really put much thought into Epiphany being about power. I rarely preached on King Herod who lied to the Magi about wanting to honor the baby Jesus as he planned and ordered the death of many innocents. I have rarely preached on King Herod's desire to hold on to power at any cost. And I tend to focus upon the inspiration of the Magi who rather than play into Herod's plans, rather than go back and tell Herod where he can find how to harm the baby Jesus, return home by another way. 
I rarely preach the bad news. And I have to confess to you, I had a choice this Sunday, uh, and I made this choice Monday. I purposely avoided the reason, and I'm sorry, the previous Monday, I purposely avoided the readings for the Feast of Holy Innocence. And those who put the lectionary together gave us three choices. And I chose Jesus as a 12 year old, amazing the priest, the wise people and scribes in the temple. And this Monday, I knew already I was going to move the readings from the Feast of Epiphany to this Sunday. But this Sunday, this Wednesday, the Feast of Epiphany, horrible things happened in our country. And I cannot avoid addressing this national tragedy on Capitol Hill which left a darkness in my soul rather than a light unto the hills. How does one preach the gospel, the good news after such a horrendous event? How does one preach the gospel, the good news when I am left with anger and rage as my house, our house, the people's house was desecrated? How does one preach the gospel, the good news after some were physically injured, several killed, all of our Congress more than likely suffering from PTSD as they were rushed for their lives to safety and all the nation suffering broken hearts as they watched this. How does one preach the gospel, the good news after one of our most democratic symbols has been attacked from within. It reminds me of the challenge of preaching immediately after 9-11, actually on 9-11, because we gathered in churches around the country on Tuesday night, that Tuesday. And that was a time when the symbols of our financial wealth and military might were attacked from without. I remember my anger and rage and my utter sadness and broken heart. I remember how part of me wanted to preach love and forgiveness and love of enemies on that Tuesday night. But I remember preaching how part of me wanted Osama bin Laden to meet Jesus real soon. How do I preach Jesus in the midst of anger and outrage? How do I preach love when I don't feel it? I could play Pollyanna and simply ignore it and preach on the visit of the Magi. I could avoid the risk of offending members of our church or those on Facebook. And yet I think I would offend every member of the church if I did, if I did not address it. And how can I not address an event that happened on the Feast of Epiphany 2021? What I do know is that we as the Magi must travel home by another way. As Michael Curry says, the way of love, peace, forgiveness, grace, and justice. But I cannot ignore the reality of my feelings. I imagine your feelings this week. My heart aches because that woman was killed, yet celebrates that there was not more blood spilled. My heart aches for the capital city police person killed, yet is glad that no more police were killed. My heart aches because many people were injured and a number of people died. And yet I'm glad no congressional members were physically injured. My heart aches at the images of violence, yet celebrates the image and courage of all our Congress returning to finish the work of the people to show that violence, an attack on our democracy does not win. 
It reminds me of how I felt last summer. My heart was warmed and inspired by the millions all over the world of peaceful protesters for justice around the world who bravely marched in the face of a pandemic in front of armed citizens showing symbols of hate in front of law enforcement who could hurt them. While my heart ached and I was angry and saddened by those few who took advantage of the situation and broke into stores and attacked our symbols of entrepreneurship. I don't believe we find the answers by being what is called Pollyanna. But I do believe we can find the answer of how to preach from the words Kumbaya, my Lord, which has been come to be equated with Pollyanna. Oh, you're so Kumbaya, everything, you think everything's gonna be okay. But Maureen looked up the origin and the meanings of that song and those words. It was originally sung and prayed by the Gullah people of South Carolina and Georgia, right around the corner, literally from where I stand now. And these words were prayed and sung during the dark days and way too many years of slavery. And yet they also found good news light in that darkness. Someone's laughing, Lord. Kumbaya, come by here. Someone's crying, Lord. Kumbaya, come by here. Someone's praying, Lord. Kumbaya, come by here. Someone is dying, Lord. Kumbaya, come by here. Someone is hating, Lord. Kumbaya, come by here. Someone is killing, Lord. Kumbaya, come by here. Kumbaya means come by here in Gola. Someone is loving, Lord. Come by here. I think and I pray that I am more of a Kumbaya kind of person than a Pollyanna, because I pray that God will come by here in our hearts, in our country. Let God be a light in our darkness. Come by here, Lord Jesus. One of the speeches, in fact, the only speech I would like to be a headline this week was a brief two minute speech given by our Vice President Mike Pence as the Senate reconvened after the violence. His speech in the midst of such darkness was the most inspiring of any I've heard in recent years or recent memory. Sharing good news in the midst of bad, you could tell he was still out of breath after being evacuated and then returned hours later to the sacred chambers. He was obviously upset and still angry. But after the speech, a brief one, he got a two minute standing ovation by both sides of the aisle. aisle as he shared good news for our country, for our democracy, for our way of life at one of its darkest moments. And I wanna paraphrase the conclusion of his speech. To the men and women who attacked our capital today, you did not win. Violence never wins. Freedom wins. And this is still the people's house. As we reconvene, the world will witness the resilience and strength of our democracy. The elected members of the people of the United States have reconvened on the same day we were attacked to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. God bless the people of the United States of America. Now let us get back to work. Let us get back to work. The word liturgy means literally the work of the people. 
And I believe the words of Mike Pence are a call to all of us in churches all over the world to get back to work, the work of the people. So I'm gonna invite us to do that. In our liturgy, the work of the people is to worship God, to praise God, glory to God in the highest, to confess our sins, to pray. And that's what we're gonna do right now. And I, I pray a paraphrase from the liturgy of Compline. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep, and give your angels charge over those who sleep or wake. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, and shield the joyous, all for your love's sake. And now I invite you, if any of you have prayer books, to open them to the back of the prayer book, to page 838, and I'm going to be a kumbaya, Pollyanna kind of person and pray for thanksgiving for our nation. And I invite you to pray with me and read the responses out loud. You're welcome to unmute your microphones. This is Thanksgiving for our national life found on page 838 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, giver of all good things, we thank you for the natural majesty and beauty of this land. They restore us, though we often destroy them. We thank you for the great resources of this nation. They make us rich, though we often exploit them. Forgive us. Thank you for the men and women who have made this country strong. They are models for us that we often fall short of them. Inspire us. We thank you for the torch of liberty, which has been lit in this land. It has drawn people from every nation, though we have often hidden from its light. Enlighten, Enlighten us. us. We thank you for the faith we have inherited in all its rich variety. It sustains our life, though we have been Faithless again and again. Faithless. Help us, O oh Lord, to finish the good work here begun. Strengthen our efforts to block our, our ignorance and prejudice and to abolish poverty and crime and hasten the day when all our people with many voices in one united chorus will glorify your holy name. Amen. Amen. Kumbaya, Lord, Kumbaya. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Um, I invite you please to mute your microphones for the night's increase. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Clint, will you unmute your microphone and read the next part about Jesus, please? We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. Steve, will you conclude the Nicene Creed for us, please? If you have the words in front of you. I don't have my prayer book in front of me. Okay. Clint, why don't you continue? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three and can be found on page 387 in your book of common prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be, glor may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. And at this point, if you have a prayer to utter on Zoom, you're welcome to unmute your microphone. And those on Facebook Live, if you'll write them in the comment section, I will read them. I will let you know on Zoom that we have Susie Delger, Vicki Jasmine, Dorothy Brown, Sharon Hargraves, Charlene Klein, uh, Ashton, I uh, just lost it. Uh, Ashton Ingstrom, of course, Claudia Wilson, Brenda Butler, Jackie Waters, Helen Bird, Connie Johnson, Pam Lucino, Brenda Updike, Deirdre Johnson. Vicki has asked prayers for Shirley. And Margaret Ann is watching with us. And I think there's one more I missed as I scrolled too quickly. Now I think I got everybody. So you're welcome to pray along with us, everybody. Continued healing for Brendan, healing for Jerry and Randy who have COVID. Prayers for Delina, isolated in a nursing home. Prayers for Laura and healing from COVID. Prayers for Stephen Delger and healing from COVID. Continued healing for Rich and Claudia from COVID and Wayne and Donna from COVID. Pray for Jim Anderson recovering from a ski accident. Take about 30 seconds of silence, uh, and I invite you to spend that time opening your hearts, ears, and minds to hear God's word in your own life.
Also welcome anyone. I can't see everybody, but I do have it in gallery view. Is anyone celebrating a birthday this week or last week? And if they are, I have to have somebody else say the prayer. How about now, anybody? Okay. How about anybody celebrating anniversaries? All right. That's right, the Reese's 45 years of bliss. And I'm just gonna do a, a blessing. May God bless the love that you have shared through thick and thin, through darkness and light. And may you continue to show forth that love to the world. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Any other couples out there waving your hand? Aha! No, no, they're clapping. They're clapping for you all. Excellent. Come on, everybody. Let's clap. That is a treasure. Anybody else celebrating anniversaries? How about, and did I miss anybody's birthday? Well, I bet you on Facebook, there's a ton of people with birthdays. So I ask God to bless the birth of all of us, the birth of our nation the birth of St. Mark's. We give thanks for those who birth nonprofits, charities, churches, families throughout this fragile earth, our island home. Amen. Yeah, and there's a few more on Facebook. Prayers for Tim Boyd, Veronica, and our nation. Prayers for Ken. Prayers for Sue in the hospital. Prayers for love, peace, and health. Prayers for safe travel for Jenny and Phil. Prayers for Marion suffering from MS. And we remember Jeff, may his soul rest in peace. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this point, I would like to invite Maureen to please um, lead us in confession. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now I invite all of you, please, to unmute yourselves and on Facebook, pray out loud in your, wherever you are participating. <clears throat> and now let us pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen.
And I invite you to keep your microphones alive so that we can be Pollyannas together with the triple <laughs> alleluia conclusion of our service. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Alleluia. Not yet. Although you can say, <laughs> go ahead, say hallelujah. We, we, we can't get enough of those. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And also, also God. Hallelujah. 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 Go and Hallelujah. Hallelujah. love and serve the Lord anyway. And we will have a post load. And anybody who wants to stick around for coffee hour, please do. Kumbaya. Kumbaya. Your phones for the moment. Kumbaya. 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 Woohoo. I'll get that shirt. Good. <laughs> hour I want to lift up Owen Tanner who will be 34 years on Friday. Uh, Nancy Engstrom said really good sermon Jim and I, I want to thank Char Basket who I called and Clint Hernandez whom I called and my wife Maureen for they were a part <laughs> Maureen Brazier <laughs> for helping me with my sermon I really appreciate it. I can hear him but I can't now, I do recommend that well, one final postlude, if you'll all unmute your phone, we'll sing one verse of Kumbaya, since you all brought it up as a dismissal. Verse of Kumbaya. One, two, three. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya. I love you guys. You are so awesome. <laughs> So, Jim, I will not yes. be. I will not be at Monday morning prayer. Cancel um, it. 
No, no, don't cancel it. People need that. You're right. And, um, Friday, I won't be there. I'm working yeah. some ungodly hours. Okay. So make, just I make don't want them no godly. People. Make them yeah. godly hours. I'm going to do <laughs> my best. Shirley, it's good to see you. I hope you're doing okay. I know it's been a tough time for you. Yes, thank you. thank you. Remove the computer. Yeah. That's uh, Shirley. What? Shirley. Oh, okay. John and Pat, how are y'all doing? Doing well, thank you. Good, you look good. <laughs> well, our hair, I haven't combed my hair yet. But. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't either. <laughs> but, but I polished it. <laughs> you see? Hi. Hi, Shirley. Hi. Oh, I thought Shirley was waving by. I was. Yes, yeah, she was. Oh, okay. <laughs> Down in Pat Curves. Yeah. Bless my heart. Um, hi, sir. You can say hi to him, Mama. Hi me. there. Hi there, you guys. Hi, <laughs> hi sir. <laughs> hey, Lynn. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. Fancy meeting you. <laughs> hey, Court, are there any comments on Facebook? I'm not, my Facebook doesn't appear to be working very well. Uh, not too many. Don Thomas said, "Nice, to, nice service." Um, Margaret Ann says, "Prayers and thanksgiving for St. Mark's." Uh, Cindy King uh, is said, "It was just what I needed." And Vicky Villanova said, "Happy coffee hour, everyone." <laughs> Court, how is uh, Laura feeling? Laura's doing much better. She's sleeping well. Here she is. <laughs> <laughs> I was downstairs doing church with the Iona school. Okay. Great. Great. All right. Well, we got stuff we got to get done. So, <laughs> work, day, everybody. The work of the people. You've got the work of the people to do today. I do. I do. So, <laughs> that next week will be good. It's so. Fun. Okay. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Shannon. I'm going to stop Facebook Live now. So thank you, Facebook, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Amen. You have to leave? Or yeah. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you, Jim. Really enjoyed your sermon.